Amazing Gospel with Deaconess Victoria is a compilation of edited radio broadcasts Ag Gospel Half Hour with Deaconess Victoria. It is made up of talks comprising of a wide range of topics under the direction of the Holy Spirit, presented from a biblical perspective, in a simple and balanced manner. It is our prayer that you will find encouragement, correction, God's direction and blessing as you listen to these talks over and over again. God bless you, and may heaven at last be the portion of us all. Amen. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. This is Gospel Half Hour with Dickiness Victoria. Thank you for joining me. Please let us pray. Our Father and our Most High God, we revere you, we worship you, we praise you, we magnify your holy name. You are God and there is no one like you. You are the ancient of days, the Lord mighty in battle, the Holy One of Israel, the Bishop of our souls, the Captain of our salvation. Be magnified now and forever in Jesus' name. O Lord God, as we go into your word, we ask you that your word will fall upon fertile soil in our hearts. We receive the grace to be the doers of your word and not the hearers only in Jesus' name. Be glorified forever in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today we'll be talking about the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the title of this talk is Get Ready, We Are Going Home Soon. Get Ready, We Are Going Home Soon. Are you ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ when he comes? No one knows the day nor the hour he will come back. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 1 that when the Lord Jesus Christ was going, he gave instructions unto his disciples. And he said from verse 7, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. He was referring to the fact that no one knows when he will come back again. Verse 8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Verse 11, who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come. In like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Praise the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. When he died on the cross of Calvary, he went to hell, took the keys of death and hell from Satan, conquered him in his own territory, and came back to earth. He rose again on the third day. And very soon we'll be celebrating Easter, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. Now, he went up into heaven in glory and will in like manner return suddenly. No man knows the day nor the hour. And when he comes back, it is those who are living holy, living godly, who are saved, that will be raptured, taken up into heaven to meet with him there and ultimately reign with him forever. Before he comes back, things will degenerate greatly on the earth. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew 24 that the situation will be so bad. The book of Matthew 24 describes how bad this situation will be on earth. And if we read from verse 36, it says again, But of that day and hour when Jesus will return, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but the Father only. 37 says, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. 
But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ, is coming again at an hour you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he returns, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Praise the Lord. So God's judgment is sure for as many who will not be ready when the Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Galatians 6 verse 7 tells us that God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. In the book of Genesis, we see where God destroyed the world because of its sin and wickedness. And he saved only Noah and eight persons from the flood. We see again how he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, saving only Lot and his daughters. Well, he saved his wife also, but she disobeyed the commandment of God by looking back at the burning cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and consequently lost her life. You see, God does not send judgment without first declaring his mercy. Before he destroyed the first world, Noah preached the word of God to the people of the earth for 120 years while he was building the ark telling them to repent because the judgment of God would come upon them for their wicked ways. But they laughed him to scorn, saying, How can rain fall from the skies to the point where the earth will be overrun with water? You see, at that time, rain had never fallen on the earth. The Bible makes us to understand that at that time, there were several underground springs in the earth that used to release water onto the surface of the earth to moisten the soil for plant growth. Rain had never fallen from the skies onto the earth the way it is today. So no man had ever seen rain before. But God said it would happen. And sadly, they did not believe. He gave them a long span to repent. But they refused to repent and ultimately the rain fell and all of creation was destroyed. Even today, geology tells us that there is evidence that the earth was once overrun with a flood. The word of God is sure and it will surely come to pass. God does not send judgment without first declaring his mercy. Nowhere in the word of God is there judgment without mercy. And just as Noah warned the first world of judgment to come, so also the warning is going out today to every man, to every woman, every boy, every girl to repent from sin. Because very soon the mercy of God will cease and rapture will come. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 15 to 18. It says, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are dead. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Question is, do you believe this word of God or not? Do you believe that judgment will come on the world? You see, by the time the rapture takes place, the taking up of saints to meet with the Lord Jesus Christ in the air, the restraint on Satan will be removed from the earth at that time. The Holy Spirit will leave the earth. And imagine the worst you can. The Bible says it will be worse than that for as many who are left on the earth. 
That is when nuclear weaponry will be used on earth as prophesied in the book of Revelations, where the Bible says that a third of vegetation will be destroyed in a day, a third of mankind will be destroyed in a day. Cities will be leveled. It will be difficult for people to exist without being poisoned by the fallout of nuclear weaponry. Many who are not killed by the blasts of fire will be destroyed by the fallout of radiation and it will poison the waters. Remember the Bible talks about the waters becoming bitter. May God have mercy upon our souls in Jesus' name. In addition, it will be difficult for men to buy and sell in that day because Satan will take register of every man left on earth. And when I say Satan, I mean the government of the day headed by the Antichrist, who will be engineered by Satan himself to do all that he does. There are computers available on earth as we speak today that can accommodate the biodata of every man on earth. Satan will demand worship from every individual on the earth, and he will also keep a tab on everyone by insisting that they have a microchip buried under their skin either in the forehead or under the skin of the right hand already this technology has been perfected and test run in some advanced countries why the excuse will be that a person can lose his atm card his master card his credit card which he uses for financial transactions as you might know there are countries where cash has already been largely phased out. Financial transactions are being carried out either on the phone or using a credit card. Now it will come to a point where credit cards will be phased out because credit cards can be stolen or lost. Identities of individuals can be stolen and used to commit fraud. And so the Antichrist is going to demand that the microchip that will be linked to your bank account will be under the skin in your right hand or in your forehead. And so when you want to make a transaction, there will be machines that can read off your credit card number and transactions can be made. However, the Bible says whoever takes this mark of the beast, which the Bible calls 666, can never be saved. The fate of such a one is sealed forever hell will be the outcome for such a person so it is either you take the mark and go to hell or you'll be killed and the mode of killing usually will be by beheading but you don't have to go through that you can be with the lord jesus christ in heaven by genuinely giving your life to him today have you given your life to the lord jesus christ but are handling your spiritual life with a lackadaisical attitude or even with outright carelessness you are not doing yourself good at all. If life could be represented by a pyramid, which looks like a triangle, God should be the foundation. God should be the base of our lives. And as you know, the foundation is the most important part of the building. It holds up the building. And so if God is in his rightful place in your life, then you will be saved from the turbulence ahead. If God is in his rightful place in your life already, Thanks be to God. Keep pursuing him. But let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he falls. If God is not the foundation of your life, if he is just an appendage in your life, I encourage you, I plead with you to make him the foundation of your life. Making him the foundation of your life means giving your life to God Jehovah and allowing him not only to be your savior but your Lord. When he is your Lord, it means that his word is law in your life. His commandments override the opinions of man. You live primarily to please him and to do his will and not to please yourself. Otherwise, a time is coming when you will regret that he was not the foundation of your life, when you did not build your life on him, when you did not pursue him as the most important thing that you require, even more than food and more than air. So since we know that all things will come to an end very soon, let us watch and pray. Jesus himself used the phrase watch and pray 
a number of times in the New Testament. And what was the night before the crucifixion when he told his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane that they should watch and pray? Because he knew that a turbulent time was ahead of him and of them as well. And that was the night before the crucifixion. Unfortunately, they did not watch and pray. Three times the Lord Jesus Christ prayed for an hour, telling his disciples to watch and pray, but each time he came back, he found them sleeping. And he was grieved that they could not watch and pray with him for even one hour. As a consequence, Jesus, who was watching and praying, received strength to go through the cross. Remember, he is God, but existed at that point in time like a man. And so he needed supernatural strength from God through prayer to go through the horrendous challenge of dying on the cross for mankind. The disciples who did not watch and pray ran away at the time of need and Peter denied him that night three times. And it was here at the Garden of Gethsemane that Jesus had earlier said unto them, The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Meaning to say that we must discipline the flesh so that the flesh does not hinder us from doing the will of God and from making heaven. The needs of the flesh can be so overwhelming that if we are not careful, it will prevent us from living for God. It will prevent us from walking uprightly before God. It will cause us to be at ease in Zion, where we would rather choose to please the flesh and live in pleasure than do the will of God, which can be hard on the flesh. And the Bible says, Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. We are already in the end times and we have begun to see some of the things prophesied about in Luke chapter 21 about the details of these end times. We see nation rising against nation, ethnic groups rising against other ethnic groups, killings, famines, bloodshed, wickedness that is senseless to the same mind. These are all the things that the Lord God Almighty prophesied will happen in the end times. The Bible says specifically in Luke 21 verse 10, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences. We are still in the pestilence of COVID, even though many parts of the world are already recovering. And the Bible continues by saying, And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you. That is, those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. And it goes on and on, talking about how those who believe in God, who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, will be hated by all for the sake of his name. He says there will be betrayals even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends. Some they will put to death because of their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. However, as many who stand to the end will be saved. As many who watch and pray will be saved. And so what does it mean to watch and pray? The word translated watch means to have the alertness of a guard at night. You know, a night watchman must be even more vigilant than a daytime guard. Because during the day, the guard can spot trouble from a distance. Danger can be spotted from a distance. But in the night, everything is different. A night watchman must be alert. His eyes must be open. His ears must be on ground to hear and detect danger. He's often alone in the dark. And without being careful and alert, he would otherwise be in danger from the enemy. Because he could be attacked at any time. And so he must be truly vigilant. This is the type of watching the Lord Jesus Christ spoke about. Christians should be on guard for the attacks of the enemy. The enemy seeks to distract us. He seeks to bring challenges our way that will discourage us and cause us to lose our faith in God. So that he can strike and wound. And so when people hurt you, speak against you, offend you. When negative things happen to you, when unpleasant things happen to you, hurtful things happen to you, watch, 
be on your guard because the enemy could be the one behind all of these manipulating events in order to offend you. And when you become offended, if you do not forgive immediately, a root of bitterness can be sowed within you that will break fellowship with the Holy Spirit in your life. Many Christians have lost their faith in God as a result of the challenges of life. But if we choose to be vigilant, if we choose to watch and pray, then with the help of God, we can conquer the wiles of the wicked one. The Lord Jesus Christ warned us that we are too easily distracted by the physical and so we'll be caught unaware if we do not continually discipline ourselves. The physical, our needs, needs for food, needs for comfort, the need for money, the need for pleasure. We all want to be comfortable, we want to be happy, we want the easy life. But if we tow that path without continually disciplining ourselves, then we might miss that which is most important, which is the kingdom of God. Because we are in a warfare, a warfare to maintain our faith, a warfare to pursue God, a warfare against the kingdom of darkness, a warfare against Satan. It is important that we win this war so that our souls be saved, so that heaven will be our portion. God is willing to help us, but he needs our cooperation. He needs that we discipline the flesh. And that is why someone said that the devil is not our greatest enemy to make in heaven, but the flesh. The flesh is that fallen carnal nature. That nature acquired when man sinned against God. That ego that wants to dominate and rule that is self-centered and is rebellious against the words and the will and the commandment of God. The devil works through the flesh nature. And so physical needs can overpower our desire to obey God if we do not continually watch and pray. Seeking God in the place of fasting and prayer where we can receive strength to overcome the flesh and to overcome Satan. If we do not remain spiritually vigilant, and in tune with the Spirit of God, ready to deny the flesh, we will be overcome by the evil one. Jesus' disciples today must watch and pray. We can be so easily distracted by this world, by entertainment, by our fleshly needs and desires and the schemes of the enemy. When we take our eyes from the Lord Jesus Christ and the fact that he is returning soon, our values will begin to shift our attention will be distracted and soon we will be living like men who do not expect the return of the master, bearing little or no fruit for the kingdom of God, not living for God, not witnessing to others, not being kind and loving to others, not serving God and man, because why? We are at ease in Zion. The Lord Jesus Christ warned us that we must be ready at any moment for we do not know the hour when he will return. And so we shall serve him faithfully, preaching the word of God in season and out of season. Serving God, serving mankind, being conscious of the fact that we are on earth for a temporary period. And at the end of our lives, every one of us will give account of what we have done with our lives and with the gifts that God has given us, just as the Lord Jesus Christ illustrated in Matthew 25, using the parable of the talents. Remember, three servants were given talents and abilities to serve God with. Two were faithful and one was not. At the end of the day, the two who were faithful were rewarded, but the one who was unfaithful with his life and with his talent, who did not serve God with the gifts that God had given him, was thrown into outer darkness, where there is gnashing of teeth and weeping. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. And so each of us should be wise, using our lives now that we we'll still have it, now that we still have breath in our nostrils, we should use our lives to the praise and to the glory of God's holy name. When the Bible says watch and pray, we can only remain faithful when we are devoted to prayer. In prayer, we continually allow God to forgive us, 
to cleanse us, to teach us and to strengthen us to obey him. The Bible says we should abide in him and he in us. As the vine cannot bear fruit of itself, so also we cannot bear fruit except we abide in him. When we stop praying regularly, when we stop reading the word of God regularly, when we stop meditating especially upon the word of God regularly, we stop receiving the power, the strength to obey God and to walk in obedience to his commandments. And so in order to obey the word of God, it is important that we daily spend time in fellowship with God. In order to keep watch, we must pray for endurance and freedom from distractions. We must pray without ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. When we live with the expectation of the Lord's return and expect persecution at the same time because of our stand for righteousness, then we are more likely to keep our lives pure and our hearts ready to meet God Almighty, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he returns. In addition, when you accept the fact that persecution comes with godly living in an ungodly world, it will be easier to accept persecution and take trouble in your stride when it comes. In fact, it will be easier to accept it with joy because you are being persecuted for your faith in Christ. The Bible says that when we suffer, we should not suffer for being evildoers, but we should suffer for righteousness' sake. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so in conclusion, be aware that everyone faces challenges in life. Whoever says to you, give your life to Christ and all your problems will be solved, is not giving you correct information, is not telling you the truth. There will be difficult times. The Bible promises us so. But God promises that he will be with us even in those difficult times. Isaiah 43 verse 2 says, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. The waters there and the fire there in that verse are symbolic of trouble, of hard times, of fiery times. Hallelujah. Even if you are a pastor, challenges will come. And challenges can either make you better or make you bitter against God and against man. Challenges can encourage you or discourage you. They can draw you closer to God or pull you away from him. Some are saying, if there is God, why are we having all these challenges in life? They forget that sin is the cause of wickedness in the earth. They forget the scripture that says in the latter times as we approach the coming of Christ, perilous times shall come and the love of many shall grow cold. It is my prayer that our love for God will not grow cold in the name of Jesus. Challenges can discourage a person to a point where they lose their faith in God, which is Satan's aim anyway. And so we must watch and pray every day. We must live like men expecting the coming of their master. Watch. We must pray for grace to watch. We must pray for strength to overcome. Please never let your guard down. Never choose to enjoy the world to a point that you forget that you are here for a temporary period and you forget what is most important in as much as God wants us to enjoy life. But we should remember that we are only pilgrims on the earth and death rate is 100%. Someday we will have to meet God and give him account of how we have lived. And so, in summary, live ready for the coming again of our Lord Jesus Christ by watching and praying. Watch against offenses that may hinder you from walking in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Watch for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ again. Live with the consciousness that you are a steward here on earth and that you are here temporarily and will give account to the master when he comes. Watch to be sure that you are in the center of his will, serving him and doing his will part time and pray, pray for strength to watch. Praise the Lord. 
If you want to give your life to Christ, if you want to rededicate your life to Christ, join me in praying this prayer now. So let us pray together saying, Almighty God, I recognize that I am a sinner and I have disobeyed your commands. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and become my Savior and Lord. From today, I will live to serve you and to do your will. I turn away from sin. I repent from all sin. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, I pray for you that the hold of sin be broken over your life. I pray that Christ be formed in your heart by faith. I pray that you will never lose that salvation which you have received just now in the mighty name of Jesus. And in order not to lose that salvation, it is important that you learn to pray, to fast regularly, and to meditate upon the word of God every day. And also join a godly Bible-believing church where you can be taught the word of God and grow in the knowledge of God. In addition, please get a Christian devotional booklet that you can use for your daily prayers and quiet time with the Lord Almighty. And I recommend devotional booklets like our daily bread, our daily guide, our daily manna, seeds of destiny, open heavens, daily fountain, and so on. Ask for a good one from any Christian bookshop. And God bless you. God keep you. Always remember, make God the foundation of your life. Make him your primary pursuit in life. Devote your lifetime to serving him and loving him. And you will not be ashamed at the end of your life. God bless you. In Jesus name. Amen.